I have here open Lightroom Classic. You can tell if you look here at the upper left corner, it says Lightroom Classic, but you'll see there are obvious differences between the two versions. And it looks, well, definitely very different from Photoshop. Uh, there are some things you'll find throughout the interface, and you might find them in Lightroom Modern as well. Um, for this video's sake, and for brevity's sake, I will just say Lightroom instead of Lightroom Classic. And when I refer to the other one that's just called Lightroom, I will call it Lightroom Modern. Uh, so that we don't get too too much into all the terminology. So this, the thing we're looking at right now, this will be just Lightroom. And it has this central work area where you see some photos right now. And it has four panels. To the right, to the left, to the bottom, and to the top. It's a bit difficult to tell that the one at the top is also a panel, but it is. Uh, and these have, well, various features. They stay kind of the same, uh, regardless of where you are in the app. So at the bottom, you have the film strip, where you have a constant view of your, uh, let's say, of your folders. It's a bit more complicated than that, than that but of the files you're working on currently. Um, on the left you have the navigator where you can open new files and export uh, up to a point and organize the files into collections and stuff like that. And on the right you have the panel where the particular settings for the area you are in reside. Um, at the top, you just have a nameplate here that tells you the app you're in. Well, you have the menus at the very top, just like in any Windows application, and Mac as well. And then what's important, you have here at the right a few tabs. These are the things that matter here in the upper panel. Once you work in a particular one, most of the time you don't even need this panel open because you don't switch very often. So you might get some extra real estate on the screen by closing it. So you can close all of these panels or hide them away temporarily. If you go to the edge of the screen, there's a little arrow. It might be a bit difficult to tell, but if you click on it, that panel goes away. And the same for the bottom, the same for the other side the same for, for the top. You can maximize your screen area this way and if you need something once in a while you can just hover over that arrow and you get the panels back. So this top panel is probably the most suited for that. These others you need more often and it's useful to see them. But if you don't need them and you'd prefer to have your images bigger or see more of them at the same time then you can hide away these panels. Uh, I will keep all of them visible just so we always know where we are and what we're doing. Um, and as I said, you have a few tabs here. So this is basically what defines the work in Lightroom. It's kind of uh, the process that you go through from choosing your images, to editing them, to preparing them for being published in whatever medium. So you go through it from left to right. First of all, you have the library tab, where we are right now, where you import your images and you organize them. You look at them, you decide which ones you want to keep, you give them um, keywords so you can find them afterwards, you can look for them, you can filter them, you can rate them and stuff like that. We'll look at that. Then you have the develop tab which is basically where we do the editing and here uh, in the right panel you have all of those options that you had in Camera Raw. Then we have the map tab and while I will focus a bit more on the library and develop tabs, these other ones are not that 
let's say that useful uh, for our pat particular purposes. I will briefly tell you what they do, but if you think you need them, you can go into them a bit more yourselves. Um, so you have the map uh, here, which places your photo so you can navigate geographically. If you have photos taken with your phone or photos taken with a newer camera that has uh, GPS tagging that tells you where the photo was taken, then those photos will show up on the map and you can navigate to them directly like this. Uh, you can also uh, place images on the map so you can organize them that way or you can insert GPS data yourselves if you really want to work that way. Now at this point I don't really have uh, from what it seems any uh, photos taken with my phone in, in imported in Lightroom so so nothing shows up but normally you would see these kinds of tags on the map itself and that's kind of it you can't really do more than that you have some information about the files you're uh, you're working on you have an overview of the map here so you can navigate it especially if you're zoomed in a lot but that's kind of it that's the map the map tab under the book tab, you can create albums out of your photos, books for print. Uh, you have all kinds of templates. Uh, you can do them quickly and almost automatically. Uh, here I have apparently a folder that is uh, placed into a book already. And you can choose different kinds of options so blurb is a service that prints your files from here online and sends them to you so these are templates for them or you can just output to a PDF and have a bit more control uh, you can choose the size of your book uh, particularly for for blurb export you have these settings for the actual final version hardcore covers soft covers uh, these kinds of things hard covers not hardcore covers <laughs> uh, the paper and how much it's gonna cost well you got you get an estimate here uh, I'm gonna change to PDF and then you just have the settings for exporting I recommend you set this JPEG quality to at least to around 90. Uh, and you see, again, I mentioned when we were talking about sharpening, you do, you almost always do an extra pass of sharpening at the very end of the process. So this is, this does it for you. Just applies a pass of sharpening to everything before it outputs the PDF, knowing that you're going to print it. The point of this is that it's going to be printed. Then you have auto layouts here uh, where you can choose how you want your photos to be uh, arranged. And then you can press auto layout and it's going to redo this. It didn't really do a very good job, but that's because I probably have too big of a folder here with images um, then you can add page numbers and decide where to put them you can uh, have a grid if I zoom in here a bit you see you have some margins um, that tell you where it's safe to have text and then where the photos go you can uh, put in extra spacing from padding here inside the cells if you click on a particular photo you can make it smaller or the other way around you can increase the space around it you can uh, set 
borders for your photos choose a color and a width let me make it it should be a bit more visible but let's see if I make it <laughs> not really um, ah yeah it's the padding of the box so the border stays outside and the spacing is inside the box anyway, I'm gonna turn this off you can add captions for all your photos uh, decide where they are uh, you can add any other text so this is from type here uh, let's see Honestly, I'm not even sure how you do that. Um, ah, no, sorry, that's for uh, getting access to the settings for the text once you have it active above. So it's just size, font, that kind of stuff. You can apply backgrounds to all the pages if it's checked to apply globally and you can add photos or just colors uh, or to one particular photo if you're if you uncheck apply background globally and that's how you do it and then you can export the book to PDF and you're gonna have a PDF of this kind of album. Um, now I don't particularly recommend you doing it this way. It's fast, it's automatic uh, and you have some options but honestly if you really want control you will use a layout application such as InDesign for example to create albums if this is something that you need. Um, Sli the slideshow tab helps you create slideshows for websites and again you have all kinds of options here you have templates uh, you can write your name you can put put in captions uh, backgrounds uh, buttons to forward and backward the slideshow uh, opening intro screens and ending screens where you can write text and put specific images uh, you can automate it have music in the background and make it run automatically when you uh, when you turn it on and let's see if I preview this this just made things from a folder automatically and then you can publish these uh, to a web website or you can send them via email or stuff like that uh, so yeah if you need something like this for a presentation for I don't know to to send with a CV for example to uh, to get a job or something like that you might do something like this um, again the use cases are not very many in my particular opinion. I'm gonna cancel out of this because it's it's going a bit slowly. You can also prepare your files for print as in if you want to um, yeah I get a little tutorial if you want to print a few sheets of images or if you want to p print them repeatedly like for example if you have portraits which you want to print really small like three by four centimeters or smaller and you want to print several on one sheet then you can have them from here uh, at the top here you have a layout so you can print a single image or packages of images uh, where you have several of them and you can just drag images from down here and arrange them um, and have like I said for for a portrait you might want to have the same image several times um, or for a cus if you want uh, different images at the same time uh, you can choose a custom package this just brought in all of the images I have selected and you can arrange them however you want so you can then print them 
you can rotate them to make the most of your paper you can again you have guides and grids so you can arrange them more easily uh, you can set up specific kinds of packages with various proportions for images and sizes uh, and you can just maybe drop an image inside a box so you get you get it to fit to the wider side of that box here you can have a background color for the page as well and watermarks and uh, cut guides these can be very useful you have a few lines to help you cut the photos after you print them um, choose resolution again a, another passive sharpening uh, and you can print straight from here or again you can print to something like adobe pdf and print and take your files and uh, print them somewhere else uh, and then you have export for web where again you have automatedly uh, created web galleries uh, and you can choose from various kinds of templates uh, and you see it automatically generates something and again you can put in text colors uh, decide the size of the images decide what happens when you click on them if there's a little animation or if there isn't um, now the the captions for the images if they're shown or not what quality they're exported at if they have watermarks again if they're sharpened once more you can uh, upload straight to a server so you can have these online or you can export a folder and then you can upload it to your uh, preferred location whenever you want or you can just run it locally kind of like a slideshow uh, but it's it, it, it does have the structure for a website so uh, what you export out of this is complex so it's not really, uh, quite made for direct sharing it is made to be published online so if you need these kinds of fe features to export books, slideshow, uh, galleries for the web or print, this is where you do it from. Uh, I wanted to quickly go through these and get these out of the way so we can look at what's most important here, library and develop. If you want to go into these more, the features are quite easy to use uh, and that's kind of what they do. We'll move on to, well, move back to library and developed to get into the core of what Lightroom does.